I get this question a lot. What's the difference? You know, why omega-6, why omega-3? Are omega-6 good for you? To a point, yes. There are essential omega-6 fatty acids, okay? And by their essentiality, that means without them, you've got some sort of deficiency. So yeah, they're essential. There are essential omega-3s as well. So let's take a look at what's going on here. The problem is not the, those, the six or the three. The problem is the imbalance. It says both omega-6 and essential fatty acids, bioactive lipids, critical inflammatory balance. So here's how it works. You've heard of me say this before, so uh, I just thought I'd bring it again. Omega-6 fatty acids are considered pro-inflammatory, okay? Which is fine, because you have to have something that heats you up, otherwise you get very cold, okay? Omega-3 fatty acids are anti-inflammatory. They inhibit inflammation. And that's how we are able to stay at a pretty steady temperature, pretty steady state of temperature. Our, our biochemistry isn't going so fast we're burning up or going so slow that we're freezing. Okay, it's a nice balance. And it's driven by the prostaglandin cascade, which has two arms, and one arm of the prostaglandin cascade is omega-6 de dependent, and the other is omega-3 dependent. So they're both needed. So omega-3 is also, you know, thing to consider here, omega-6, they, they promote platelet aggregation. That's how they promote clotting. Not a, not a good thing unless you cut yourself, and of course you want to clot, so you stop leaking. And they promote vasoconstriction. That's when your, your veins and arteries contract like that, which tends to elevate blood pressure. Okay? So, important that you have that force, though, because you want something to counter off, counterbalance what omega-3s do. Omega-3s reduce platelet stickiness, aggregation, reduce the likelihood of a clot, and they are vasodilators, so they relax those veins and arteries to promote flexibility that ends up with a balance of, of uh, uh, blood pressure. So it says, by playing opposing antagonistic roles, balancing these functions in human metabolism. So how much do we need for metabolic balance? Scientists believe that the beginning of the agricultural revolution, when we actually got to where we had food to eat every day, okay, that the ratio was somewhere between four to one and one to four. And it makes sense when you think about it, the four to one would be the people living off the land because they would get most of the plants and not so much of the, the sea life, if you will, as opposed to the ones living near the sea where they would get most, they would get more omega-3s because they were harvesting deep water fish. You know, in the middle of Nebraska, you can grow a lot of things, but you're not gonna find many salmon to catch in the water there. Okay. Just, so those people, the data actually ties back to where they, where they were. Okay. Scientists believe that the perfect O6-03 ratio is 1 to 2 to 1, meaning 1 to 1 for each omega-6 you have an omega-3, or 2 to 1. You have 2 omega-6 per omega-3. So that sort of balance is what biochemically we think is the best sort of balance. So where are we? Well, how did we get here? We're getting progressively worse. Pre-industrial revolution, the, the, when we looked at the food supply then that we were eating back in the 1700s, 1800s, you know, off the, off the farms and so on, the ratio was about two to one, omega-6 to, uh, to omega-3. By 1939, when we first started tracking this data, it had jumped to 8.4 to one. So you can see we get a little fire going there. By 1985, it was 10.3 omega-6 to every omega-3. 2011, 17.1, 2021, right now it is 20 to one. So if you think about the balance between those two, and if omega-6 is pro-inflammatory and, and sort of uh, platelet aggregating and, and vas vasal contraction, you know, contracting restriction of your of your blood vessels, what is that telling you your bio biochemistry is pointed at? Your biochemistry is pointed at that. You don't have enough of the balancing side of that to maintain a healthy balance, which is why so many people have high blood pressure, okay, and they have lots of problems with their circulation and things like that because of that underlying balance. Your body would like to balance things out. You're just not giving it 
what it needs, okay? Some South Asian populations, you can see it's 50 to one. The life expectancy in those South Asian populations is also about 55 years old, okay? So there's a driver, driver of age there, okay? So what is this costing us? Overconsumption of omega-6, polyunsaturated fatty acids versus dietary omega-3s in the modern diet. The disturbing factor for balanced antagonistic metabolic function in the human body, this is from this, again, this year. We spent a lot of time in the SAB staying up to date with research, which is why you see me coming out and saying this was last month or earlier this year or yesterday or tomorrow. Sometimes we know what's coming before it gets there. This change in N6 to N3 ratio, possibly more than any other dietary factor, has contributed to the significant increase in the prevalence of body tissue and systemic inflammation, overweight obesity, which altogether lead to an epidemic of diet-related chronic non-communicable diseases such as, it sounds like our end the trend story, right? End the trend in chronic disease. Because that's, and they're saying that the omega-6, omega-3 imbalance is the single most important driving factor behind that. Now, these are lipid researchers, okay? So they're gonna try to make sure that you understand that the lipids are the most important thing and everybody else's work is sort of meaningless. Okay, because they're the lipid guys. But if you think about it, 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 that starts to make sense. I don't know how neurodegenerative diseases got blocked out there, but look at like hypertension. We can get that cancer type 2 diabetes, arthritis, and other autoimmune and possibly neurologic diseases. Y you know, if you look around at the data, there's a lot more autoimmune disease present in our population, probably diet-driven probably to a great degree, diet-driven. Uh-oh, I'm back. So how do you fix it? You've seen this picture before. You know, you cut back on this stuff and you increase this stuff. Now, um, again, omega-6, you, you, it'd be impossible for you to eliminate it from your diet and you wouldn't want to because it's everywhere. So it's not the naturally occurring omega-6 fats that you would get from eating whole grains or something like that. It's the industrialized version of that. Just like the natural sugars in fruit are good for you, the natural lipids, omega-6 lipids in grains and so on are good for you. It's the industrialized version of that that's bad for you. It's these little franken-nutrients that they create out there. And then they overload the system with it, you know, because it's cheap. It's cheap. These things, these industrial-made products are cheap. And, you know, industry, sadly enough, that's their stick, right? They want to give you, you know, a giant cheeseburger and X 10 pounds of fries and a big sugary beverage and make a profit selling it to you for a dollar. That's their game plan, right? And uh, it isn't going to work. <laughs> 